Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honored to be here. Um, and also, the two other featured poets were quite beautiful. So, and the other open mic. So, thank you all for sharing your voices. Um, I was invited here as part of the Queer Creatives Group with Lighthouse Writers Workshop. Um, and one thing that I really treasure about Lighthouse is that they know that telling stories will always be sacred. So. This first poem is called, You Buried Me Right Where I Belong. Baby, I watch you watch me destroy myself. Baby, I am static, ending gray, starting gray. I watch you watch me sleep with eyes closed. We sleep in dead leaves. I decay along with my precision. There are tangles in my armpit hair, sweaty coupling with my bluish revolution. There are paint, there are paintings, there are stains under me, my skin in this place called map. Honey, I am like some kind of cosmological miracle. I am turning blue, I'm turning my favorite color. I am beginning a new place in myself. And when I pour you into the earth, you carve out a new place to rest too. Thank you. <laughs> um, this next poem is called Of All Stars the Most Beautiful, which is a fragment from Sappho, the original lesbian poet. <laughs> they slash me are singular, howling. My friend slash water is here, licking at the glint of the sun. She slash I do not know when this will end. We spend more and more time gazing at moss and their homes. In another universe, she slash you is taller, tanner, does not breathe oxygen, but carbon dioxide. You slash I wonder where we should be. All right, and then this one is part of the manuscript that I wrote with the Mile High MFA at Regis University. Um, which I entitled, um, Dear Universe, Everything in Me You Eat. This poem is called, And You Give Me a Pocket-Sized Rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, and the clouds collapse. But I am here with you, watching the rain and study the sound of dissent. A part of your voice is loud. You say, sorry, you are smoking, sorry. You stub your toe, say, you are saying something about the circles we draw around the sun. I say, you mean orbit. You shake your head no. Point to our chest and draw circles over your sternum, circle after circle. It cuts out your cotton blend tea, and soon you are cutting through your skin, letting blood fall out, letting all the bones you've kept clatter like lost crystals behind the bones is a black hole, and you show me all the constellations you make. This next one is called, I was on fire, where did you go? Which is a really great line uh, from a song that I love. <laughs> when faced with a red sun, sailboat clouds, a shiver not unlike a pink and gold sunset, I always come back to you. And that moonlight you held so steady in your palm, it reminds me so much of a sigh. When I held you, what did it feel like? Was it like running into the ocean or finally wiping the clouds from your eyes? Was it then that I became an ending, like a white dwarf collapsing on itself? A star so ancient, it must become some other cosmo. I feel gray today. Do you ever think about every path you walked or what if you could know everything you caused? I held you like a star, like something bound for extinction but your death is beautiful. It is like watching meteor showers, like watching nebulas say hello. Okay, this one is called String Theory, which I originally wrote as the painter's brain chemistry, which was in my first chapbook a long time ago called 1962 McCullum Road, not officially published, but I decided to use that and kind of morph it to fit into my book about astrophysics and loss and all of that. <laughs> so this is string theory. I'll tell you, this is what astrophysics is. 
knots of decisions of parallel selves in each atom, the strings tying ourselves to ourselves. In the subatomic world, our ideas are slower, just choices, yes or no. Could I travel the length of the universe in one sleep? Could I find myself as a black hole someplace else? We can have no closure here. In the real world, there is a bench. The seat is rotting and your nails are scraping off the paint. I tell you, every moment is a choice rippling. All right, and then I actually have a little more time than I thought. So I'm gonna read this one, um, which was kind of in honor of um, the Queer Creatives group. So I looked at the etymology of queer and um, some of its like original meanings took me back to a phrase, there is nothing as strange as people. And I thought that was amazing. <laughs> so I named this poem after that. I put my mouth on your mouth. I put my night on your night. I put my mouth on your night. The stars come out just before you close your eyes. The constellations on your back change every night. I connect them with loose string from our warm blankets, and I count the collection on your shoulder. Sometimes you wake up looking mad, like you're about to cast a spell on me. But then you kiss me, and I think you understand everything. I put my mouth on your light. You held me like it wasn't going to break me. You put your song in my ear. You tapped tempo on my chest. You sang into my night. You held me back. You held me. My you held my knots. You caught my night as it was about to clatter to the floor. You held my hands. You held them like they were what was keeping you alive. You put your worries into my mouth and I swallowed them. I held your body, I mean your magic. I kissed you hard and soft. I gave your kisses made of night and you will hear them even without the lights on. All right, and this is the last one I'll share. It is the opening poem for my manuscript called Poem for a Degenerate Star. As if being and having was enough to be hushed by solar wind. That starlight is not quiet, it erupts in breath, and it loops of and its loops of fire wind up a fiery noose. As if being a horizon described the dreams of tiny creatures who gaze upon you inside with unawareness, knowing you would be their ending. There will be an ending, which is to say there must also be beginning. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Violet. I really enjoyed that a lot. Thank you. Um, I, what I took note of is a lot of the scientific references as well, too. What, what makes you uh, mention that stuff? Because I do similar stuff in terms of mentioning science and biology. I like that. Yeah. Um, so I really like research that's based on real life and science. And I love to find out weird things about the world that we've learned. Um, and for my manuscript that I wrote at the MFA, um, I did a deep dive on astrophysics, so <laughs> I learned a lot. Yeah, that's really cool. Like, <laughs> about yeah, like the string, string theory, theory yeah. and it is complicated. Yeah. It is, definitely. Um, but what I was really writing about was parallel universes and um, kind of the grief that um, and how we use parallel universes in our mind to kind of cope with grief um, and how we imagine our loved ones doing things with us or what they would have said to us to kind of... Um, get through their being gone i like that yeah, yeah. that's very cool <laughs> thank you <laughs> and how much does your artistic visual practice uh, influence your poetry um i would say a lot um i observe a lot of images i think in the world and um very specific moments always stick with me. Uh, like one time I was writing outside <laughs> with a glass of wine and there was an ant like crawling on the glass and I wrote a poem about it. <laughs> That's so great. sometimes when I don't know what to write about, I just kind of look around. Yeah. And yeah, I like that. Yeah. And a lot of times when I'm just sitting at my desk, I just look at the window and I'm like, okay, that's in here. I'm um, the same way. Yeah, yeah definitely. So in that yeah. way, I kind of feel like every poem is a little bit like a time capsule of my life mm -hmm. from that moment. 
Um, and I really like doing that. So it's sort of also like a diary thing for me to remember what I've done. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I also, I'm very happy that you also brought in the queer perspective on things as well, too. It's always nice to yeah, have more of course. queer poetry involved. Very in important. This. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And queerness is sacred. So it's an important part of the sacred voices. It is indeed. Yeah. Very well said. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. So. <laughs> but thank you so much, Violet. I appreciate it. Thank you, you so much yeah. for having me. Thank you all so far. Yes. <laughs>